All right, everyone, hello, welcome again. My name is Jason Levine. Thank you for joining me today. And for the next 20 minutes or so, we're going to be talking about the newest feature coming to Adobe Audition CC, something called the Essential Sound Panel. And we designed the Essential Sound Panel to basically allow new or novice audio edit, or let me rephrase that, to allow editors who are not really audio editors, or maybe compositors, or people who are just working in Premiere and just they're not, audio is not their main focus. And audio tends to still intimidate people to allow those people to very easily create broadcast quality audio for their video projects quickly in the spirit of the Lumetri panel. The Lumetri color panel was a reimagined, redesigned way of thinking about color for editors who maybe weren't colorists. And that's actually what my colleague uh, Robbie Carmen is going to be talking about in 20 minutes. So you'll definitely want to stick around for his presentation. It's fantastic and very inspirational. It actually inspired me to uh, experiment more with color. Well, this will hopefully inspire you coming soon to the next version of Premiere and Audition to want to work with audio and to feel confident that the audio that you deliver will follow broadcast standards and be broadcast deliverable ready. All right, so we have a project here. This is um, <clears throat> another film uh, called Nature's Orchestra. So it's really a remote area. By someone named Stephen Most, and he went out sort of around the world and Anybody captured natural <laughs> sound and then brought in a bunch of students to kind of experience what all these various natural sounds were like. Now this is kind of the unmixed raw audio project here. So from the Premiere Pro timeline, I can send all of this directly to Audition non-destructively, including the video, leveraging dynamic link. This is the same dynamic link that we have between uh, After Effects and Premiere. You've seen a direct link between Premiere and Speedgrade. We offered this about a year ago between Premiere and Audition. So I'll click OK on this. Let me go ahead and just retitle this. We'll call it NO Day 2. All right. It quickly prepares the session. It sends the audio over and the video non-destructively and replicates what we just saw inside so Premiere. It's really a remote area. Okay. All of the track names, all of the panning, if we had things like keyframed uh, volume changes, they all carry over non-destructively. Even the color coding of the tracks is the same. All right, and you'll notice that on the right side here, we have the essential sound panel. We're basically, to begin, to start this process, we identified four basic mix types, DMEA, Dialogue, music, sound effects, and ambience. Okay, these are the most common things we encounter in an edit. So let's start with dialogue. Up here, we've got this track, VO. <clears throat> this is Bernie, the narrator. All right, so we'll come over here and we're just gonna solo this. Now, when I tell Audition that this is dialogue, immediately what it does is it brings up a whole series of effects that are common for processing dialogue, okay? So first and foremost, you'll see unifying loudness. Now, I'm going to talk a little bit more about this in a couple of minutes. This will allow you automatically to take all of your audio and immediately conform it to any particular broadcast loudness standard, whether it's ITU, whether it's EBU, whether it's ATSC, whether you actually just want everything to have the same peak loudness, you can set this here. Okay? Next, you have the ability to do things like repair the sound. So processes like noise reduction, or reducing rumble, or de-humming, or de are now confined to a single slider. Now, you might think that seems really simple. How could you do all of that with one slider? It doesn't seem like enough control. Seems like the result is going to be lame. <laughs> well, if we actually bring up the noise reduction here, as you'll see as I apply these, it's actually applying them to the clips themselves non-destructively. As I move the amount of noise reduction in the slider here, it's actually dynamically adjusting in real time different parameters in the noise reduction effect that we've predetermined to give you the best sound. It's also analyzing those clips, setting threshold levels to give you that best sound. But where I find this is so invaluable and truly one of those Adobe magic features is in applying compression. And as I just said moments ago, if you're new to audio, or if you've just never really worked with a compressor before, right, I can guarantee you will likely set it incorrectly. Your, your dialogue will either be pumping, right, it'll just be poorly set, or the volume will be l low still, but noisy, and you won't know why. Compression is hard. It, it is. It's, it's an art to know how to do it right. 
most people, if they've never done it before, first time, probably not gonna get it right. So we've taken the pain away there. Now, as I mentioned, one of the first things we'll do is we'll analyze the thresholds of all of your audio. And if I go into the dynamics processing effect here, and we'll play this so you can actually hear what it's doing, it's automatically identifying the threshold to know where compression should begin so that you don't get this artificial pumping or unnecessary noise. And as you move that slider, just like you saw with noise, it's dynamically adjusting those parameters, either to a more natural sound or a more focused sound. So we're going to start on this clip. I'm going to unsolo and let you hear what it sounds like with everything around it. And then I'm gradually going to increase the compression just to bring the voice more into focus. Take a listen. The late 1960s. I have recorded more than 4,500 hours and over 15,000 species in marine and terrestrial environments. Environmental sciences that study the world we see can gain a fuller understanding from what we hear. Habitats that look the same may no longer sound the same. Let's wind that back a little bit. And again, I'll turn it back to natural. Let's play this. Environmental sciences that Let's study the world we the see focus. can gain a fuller understanding from what we hear. Habitats that look the same may no longer sound the same. Now, not only does it sound cleaner, focused, it sounds good, right? You're not hearing any pumping. It doesn't sound particularly affected. You were hearing noise because there's background ambience and noise. Again, that's where you'd use that noise reduction, not on the voiceover here. So it's doing a combination of compression and downward expansion. Again, because it knows where the thresholds are. If all of that, what I just said, means nothing to you, fine. You don't need to know what that is because this is, it's doing it. The best part of this is, is that if you were to hand this off to someone else after the fact to refine it further, they always have access non-destructively to what's been done. Very simple. Really, really amazing for setting vocal compression. Now, it doesn't end there, of course, because you have three other mix types. So what about something like the environmental sounds, OK? So this is what we were hearing here. That's why you're hearing a lot of that noise. This is actually coming off of just environmental noise, environmental sound in the environment. And as we denote this as ambience, you'll see now that we have the ability to, once again, unify loudness or even add things like ambient reverb, just to give it a little more dimension, a little bit more space, particularly if they're mono files. So we can actually adjust this. Once again, if we pull up our studio reverb here, you can choose a particular preset and gradually increase the amount. You even have things like stereo width processing. Have been altered Again, you can begin to widen the stereo. This matters greatly. Okay. You'll even notice that you've got control here to adjust the center. Now again, the novice user doesn't ever actually have to go into that effects panel because one of the artifacts of not understanding how stereo widening works is that it will often drop the center, which is not what you want. So here, you, again, you have control to actually control how that center channel is being affected as you're widening the content extreme left and right. Very, very cool. Now, similarly, again, you've got effects in music. Let's tackle the music one here. So, in uh, October of this year, we introduced something called Adobe Audition Remix. I actually showcased this at Adobe Max. Remix is a unique feature that, if any of you have ever used, um, uh, I just forgot the name of it now, loop-based music or um, anything where you're sort of, you've got loops and you can recompose loops by moving them and cutting them around, or sometimes maybe you use stretching algorithms to adjust duration to fit a particular piece of video. This is doing more. This is actually analyzing the beat structure of your content. It's analyzing the harmonic structure of your content. And then based on that, it's finding edit points to cut and crossfade to truly recompose the audio based on any duration that you set. So when I target this as a remix, first it analyzes the clip so it understands the content. Let's make this, instead of 23 seconds, let's make this 49 seconds long, okay? And this is like ocarina and ocean music. If we take a listen here, those little wavy lines that you see represent the edit point. Did you hear an edit point in there? No. 
because that's what it's doing. It's performing an automatic crossfade based on the harmonic content. Now, once again, if you want to dive down deeper into the parameters here, if I go into my properties, you'll actually see under remix that you've got quite a few things that you can set here. You can actually tell Audition, particularly if you have beat-based music, right? Actual underscore with some kind of rhythmic content to focus more on the timbre or more on the harmonic side so that it can actually adjust how those cuts are applied, how those divisions are made. You can tell it the minimum loop. So again, if you have any, and by the way, this is any music. This is commercial, anything any kind of music this will work with. Um, you can tell it the minimum loop, so I don't want any cut to be less than eight beats long, okay? You can also tell it the maximum slack, how much it kind of gives at the beginning and the end. Sometimes you want a little bit of tailing, right? Things don't necessarily just start and stop, ramp in, ramp out. You can adjust that as well. You can also adjust the types of edit lengths. Here, they're kept a bit long. If we shorten them, you'll actually see more edits. Okay, now this was a fairly short piece, but if we just take a listen, I, I don't know what that's going to sound like. Let's hear if we can hear edit points. Solo it. Listening. No. It can shock you. <laughs> All right. Now you also have stretching as well. So this is leveraging our traditional stretch algorithms, once again, in properties here. You can do this in real time. Uh, you have monophonic, polyphonic, and vary speed. Monophonic and polyphonic will allow you to adjust pitch without affecting duration, or adjust duration without affecting pitch, or vary speed is just like that. It's like a resample, or slow down the tape machine, it gets longer, the pitch drops. So you can choose either one of those. So both of those are offered to you. Again, you don't have to expose those parameters. Those are preset. Now let's talk about that. So OK, we've preset them. We've made them fit what we think is best. You're in a university. You're in a small post house. You work for a broadcasting organization. I want people to use this now, but I want to make sure that everything that comes out of there is the same. Oh, and we have a couple of satellite offices and other people working in other locations. So every time they produce a doc, I want the vocals to have this setting for compression with the same minimums and maximums, this setting for uh, 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 loudness, okay, based on the EBU standard or the ITU standard. Well, one of the things that we allow you to do here is something called the template configuration view because you can actually build shareable templates that can be shared outside of your organization. So that no matter what they do, when they go into the essential sound and start moving that one slider, the predetermined minimums and maximums are already set. You've configured them yourself. The engineer who works among you can set those parameters for you. So if I go into template configuration view, let's go back up to our, our voice over here. All right, and if, just for instance, something like noise, if we go into set minimums, you could adjust the minimum amount of noise reduction based on thresholds and your maximums. Same with things like de-essing. Also, exposing these controls allows your sort of new novice audio editors to be able to begin to understand how these effects work, right? Because we've already sort of created these preset levels for you, it's just one more way to kind of understand, ah, de-essing. It's not really doing much with a center frequency at 2700 hertz because it should probably be uh, maybe around 2900 hertz. Typically, where you're going to find the actual sound is between 5.6 and 6.3K. So you can adjust that as the maximum and really begin to understand how this works. You can set this. You can save these as presets. You can create these templates, share them. Again, loudness is another one here, so you can set your target loudness based upon your broadcast standard wherever you are in the world. Don't forget that we also have, if I just bounce into our waveform view here for a second and pull up our match volume, or now, excuse me, it's now retitled match loudness. I forgot about that, changed the title here. Um, this will allow you to, let me bring a file into our match loudness panel. You can see, again, based on the analysis here, the current measured loudness, the total RMS, the peak, 
perceived loudness. Now, these two fields here are based on dBFS. We're not really so concerned with those anymore. And then all the other attributes of the files. So you can match among multiple files. You can auto-match files coming from Premiere very easily, very fast. And again, knowing that they're all going to conform to the right standard, it will analyze each of them as you bring them directly inside. Okay, We can have it compute again very easily, very simply, and you can create those as part of your template project. When you're done with this, now traditionally, we would force you to send this back to Premiere Pro to export this, right? You finish the audio, your novice audio editor says they send it back to Premiere and they go through Premiere through the media encoder. You don't have to do that anymore because media encoder export is now built in directly to Adobe Audition. So you can choose all the same file. This is the media encoder. So everything that you have in Premiere, you will see here. If we went to something like MXF OP1A, choose the encoder preset that we want, you also have direct access to the routing matrix. Anyone in broadcast knows biggest pain is when you have eight channel or 16 channel audio and the audio person needs to send everything to one and two, but I want dialogue on three, four, sound effects on five, six, bird sounds on seven, eight, whatever. Here, now, you can just graph it in this matrix very easily. Music, yep, we're going to put that on 15, 16. Environments are going to be 3, 4. All of the dialogue is going to be on 7, 8, and deliver it that way, knowing with confidence that all of those individual channels, and of course, any buses that you may have inside of your project, can be individually routed very, very easily, very, very efficiently. Exposing this in Premiere for some time, for a while, a while ago, was not so easy. Now it's right here in front of you. It's very, very simple to do. And these are really just some of the amazing innovations coming to Adobe Audition, the Essential Sound Panel, Direct Export. And don't forget, you can still send it back to Premiere and keep working. Same workflow applies as it did before. Now the difference is that AME is now an integral part of Audition's export. So my friends, that's all the time I have. Coming up is Robbie Carmen, going to talk about color. Please stick around for that amazing and inspirational presentation. Thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of NAB Day 2. We'll see you next time. Thank you. <laughs>